to the dog. <laughs> Hello, world. Frida Reba Dorsey. And one, Patricia O'Connor here. And this is, uh, this is gonna be our little Monday beat. And we're gonna start off by showing you where we're, well, let me turn off the interrogation lighting. I'll turn on a lamp instead. Get rid of that, turn that on. Okay, that's a little better. Now, one thing I'll show you right off is you can see that there is a little moisture collecting on the inside over dome. It's been like that for some time now. I haven't been doing proper um, follow-ups on this guy like I should have, but these are our cuttings as they look right now. They are, um, I haven't seen a single cutting as of yet give up the ghost. They're, they you know, they're all hanging in there they're all moist and they're all still alive and they all look to be doing look to be doing okay i haven't added water to this in several days um the water uh hits the top and then just circulates right back down that is uh due to we have uh these mats are plugged in and are running you can see they're poking out the other end also, laying the mats on a towel helps them to direct their heat more upward. Uh, it's said even in the directions that if you want more heat, put them on a towel. So I thought that would be probably uh, a pretty good way, a pretty good way to go on there. I'm not going to be able to do that one-handed, I don't think. Let's see. There we go. So. That's how we're doing so far. I've still got a lot of space there I can fill up, but I've, uh, I feel like we've got the beginning of a system here that would definitely work for us. Now, uh, I don't think I need it, but if it were required, we do have a fluorescent light on standby that we could put over that guy. I, I don't think that's what's necessary, though. I think what we want is to get everybody to root. And there's not really anything down there to look at uh, frankly, most of the plants are a little far away from this edge. We wouldn't see roots there anyway. But that also is something to think about. We are able to see through this. At some point, when things start rooting, we uh, should be able to see the results without having to uh, dig around on anything too much. And this is just kind of, um, it is another really warm day, not quite as warm as the um as our 90 degree day now i've gotten um yeah i've gotten some feedback on the dawn redwood uh which is not bad uh, but here's a quick look at it now one thing i was going to stress that whenever it did this it never actually uh dried out down here there was still moisture in the pot so it didn't it wasn't a matter of drying out it might have been a matter of heat uh on the surface even but um so we have lost a ton of foliage on this but not all of it and the other thing that i would point out is that uh if you look at the tree and you break it down into points or corners uh this end is alive 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 so basically uh the judgment call to uh move it in the shade and start doing a whole bunch of uh critical aftercare no i'm going to let those uh fronds that can still uh synthesize photosynthesize but, um, and what's busting out is busting out quickly and I want it to have every reason to uh, to do that you know I've got a lot of shoots there I want them to see I want them to see sun and continue to push right on out I do not want this thing to go into summer dormancy and have to look at it like this uh, 
for the rest of the summer the way I did last summer. This, this is a little earlier than what we went through last summer, but it's also, uh, I'm wanting to try to hurry up and get this tree back on the horse, so to speak. Uh, I mean, we're not gonna act like this didn't happen. It damn sure did. But I do still have, I do still have green active foliage on uh, basically all four corners of the tree and without really knowing better that's just going to encourage me to say let's just come on back everything was really quick to bud now it can do that and stop i watched it bud out quickly last year and then i'll watch those buds all die on the vine but let's say all of those buds do not die on the vine they just they just it gives us a, a quick flush in fact people uh, do sometimes defoliate their dawn redwoods uh, like they defoliate their uh, their bald cypress and typically in the state there is a little bit of a cult thing where if you have a uh, bald cypress a lot of people will have defoliation parties for their bald cypresses on the 4th of July I've heard of more than one person doing that I don't defoliate my trees on purpose uh, I defoliate my trees when uh, things don't go well. So uh, what have we lost here? When it comes down to it, we had a lot of foliage. What I actually think happened, because whenever I came back and looked at it and I saw all that dead wilted stuff, but then I also saw that there was still moisture on the surface of the pot uh, while I was, you know, from where I had watered it just a couple of hours before when I went. So what I think happened was when the temperature got up to like 90 degrees, the tree shuts down and uh with moisture in the pot it just stopped transferring that moisture and then uh things began to uh dry out for that lack of movement uh why other trees uh, are not as susceptible to that or whether or not this tree has already been weakened because of last year's shenanigans i couldn't tell you but uh, it's about four o'clock in the afternoon right now, just a little past four. The tree is not in direct light. It is still getting light from our uh, full spectrum LEDs and it is uh, coming out with another flush. So again, the question was, what did we actually lose? We didn't actually lose anything above all the stuff that uh, died back. None of that was stuff that would be incorporated in this tree's future design. What we lost, we lost down in here, all of these little fronds, all of our little solar panels were busy uh, collecting and storing energy right up until the time they died. And uh, this, this shut that off and stopped our storage in there hopefully hopefully uh it was really really it was really flush with uh it had a lot of heavy foliage on it um it was really full kind of out of hand full so uh that might have helped it to uh to go dry quicker but then again like i said the soil wasn't none of the soil on any of the trees was completely dry just that one had been wilted so our aftercare is to make sure it stays hydrated and um we didn't have it in uh complete direct sun all day long it was basically in that same spot so whenever i got back home at five o'clock it would have been in the shade like it is now just looking like hell so yeah we didn't really do anything about that maybe uh if i know we've got another 90 degree day coming up like today won't be uh, I might do what um, um, what the bonsai zone was talking about and put a, a, a wet towel on top. If nothing else, that might keep the heat down on the top on the surface of the pot. Uh, I've also seen there's um, a grower in uh, Japan. I always love his videos, but I have to turn them on the translate. And sometimes the translation is a little iffy, but I'm fairly sure that I um, that I understand him fairly well, and uh, his family uh, grows uh, Japanese black pines and has I think he's probably the young lion 
of like a two or three generation bonsai uh, nursery. And um, uh, he was, uh, I was watching a video this morning. A lot of times they're timely. Uh, he'll, we'll do, he'll do a video on something that if you have a black pine, you might actually be going through right now. It might be that, um, it might be that my uh, neck of the woods here in Alameda matches up uh, um, weather-wise with his region of Japan. But uh, a lot of times when he, when he is doing a video about uh, his Japanese black pine, it does seem to line up with uh, timely, in a very timely method. And he was saying he did kind of that wet, uh, the wet towel thing, except he would do that with uh, peat moss or uh, sphagnum white, white, which is it if it's white and not green and lemon? Uh, I guess it's uh, sphagnum moss. Uh, he would soak it in water first and then lay it on top of his pine trees so that their soil would not get too hot. And he then went on to say it had a, uh, it had a twofold effect in that um, it would also encourage root growth up here at the top having um, having uh, wet peat moss or uh, sphagnum moss on the top uh, as a dressing. So he said it would stay as long as it's wet. I get, I get what he's saying. If it's windy and it's gonna blow off, but uh, not, not if it's wet. Um, I'm kind of parked and camping out here, winding up the conversation about wet moss. Well, I'm looking here at our uh, cork bark oak and for good reason uh, I think you can probably see just so many so many new shoots I just trimmed that guy back uh, not even a week ago and it came back with shoots from where I cut it back three weeks before that and it came back with shoots so maybe two and a half months into this since you know since just before april and um this tree is just really 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 doing good things and i'm really happy to see it i did give it another treatment in fact i gave them all a, a treatment of neem i do that after dark so that i want uh so that I won't be baking anything. Plus I did see a little bit of cobwebs. I'm pretty sure that they might have been my leaf hopper uh, and uh, not spider mite. But just to make sure uh, I kind of look out for my leaf hopper and then I neem and then I neem the top and the bottom of the leaves just to make sure everything stays happy. This would be about the time with the heat rolling in as we roll into July that things begin to slow down. Uh, this is already starting to bud out from where uh, we've clipped it. And true to form, I think maybe I did the right thing. I'm seeing a lot of bud swell over in here and over in here. I was wondering if I shouldn't have cut those back to there and maybe there and let them start over. But they're doing good things. The whole tree is doing good things. Uh, speaking of doing good things, the Japanese black pine that uh, had me so on the ropes last year is responding well, I think, to its new placement. And um, it's a little trickier for me to water the backside of the tree, uh, but I've just about worked that out, I think, to my uh, as best I can. And um, it's just good to see all of this new growth. Just keep pushing, just keep making new stuff. And that brings us down to our 17 year old from C Japanese black pine. It's looking absolutely fabulous. This guy got uh, decandled in his needle thin. Um, Simply P got a trunk chop and uh, its needles thinned as well. Um, which then brings us to the uh, two year old from C Japanese black pine. I um, did a uh, needle reduction and, a, and um, a candle pruning on that guy. And uh, I would pan down, but I would get into uh, these other show hens here, which um, 
you can see the little the little um, show him bougainvillea is uh, putting out more of those red blooms those beautiful red blooms so okay fine if that's the way you want to do um, so I've gone on before about my show him game got a little better after I took these small almost too small to keep a tree alive uh, pots and put them in their own substrate and you can see that little cheat is working out well the uh, so far the bougainvillea was very very quick to take advantage of that and the cypress tree which is doing it's it's looks putting out a lot of foliage it's about time for me to do something else with this guy maybe in the next couple of shows we'll bring it back in and put it on the table and see what it needs to get put back into some sort of shape although right now I'm just allowing it just allowing it to do all this stuff is pretty good maybe throw a piece of wire on that guy um, but it also put out uh, some roots underneath into the substrate and that's probably helping it and it's just really easy you just pick up the pot at some point and clear all that off and then set it back down and let it start over as it wants to and um, that's just too easy that's just too easy and it is really 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 a nice way to um, up your show him game um, this is a little Japanese black pine or a little broadage Japanese black pine that we got at the auction uh, I did a little candle pruned to it as well it got watered today I'm trying uh, to get it to settle in without over watering it and uh, so far I think I'm doing I think I'm doing pretty good uh, I've gotten the other trees down it's it's like when you're trying to figure out how much to water you're like this is the kind of tree where I would probably be likely to overwater so I figured it out on this one easier than I figured it out on that one but I figured it out on that one easier than I ever figured it out on that one also so uh, this one uh, has always done well so this one looked a little bit yellow when I got it from some needles. I didn't know how many of those were like third year, third year needles, but um, it also could have been that it didn't like hanging out for an auction for a couple of days. So my main thing was just to bring it home, put it in a space that is a good space for it, and then um, and then water it as needed and try to get settled into what uh, not watering a pot too much means when it's a pot that's that size and not a pot that's that size or that size it takes me a minute to um adapt to uh whatever speed that container is it's probably what i'm what i would say about that and while i'm still over there i'm gonna try to get in here and give you a little give us a little look peek at our oak this was the oak that we got out of the yard. It got a, it got, it's probably a two or three year oak. It looks to be, you see all those cuts and chops that I've pasted up? That is from uh, the weed eater that um, topped the tree several years in a row. So I think that probably uh, got a little bonsai treatment out um, via the landscapers for a couple of years before I, uh, before I uprooted it and I need to get some clover out of there but it is starting to finally uh, looks to me like it's starting to put out some buzz that we might be able to keep it really is slow though uh, kind of tapping our watch here waiting for that to get a little a little bigger maybe a little better um, bigger better that sounds like a lead-in to uh, our bald cypress trees uh, bigger, better, balder. These guys are, uh, these guys are doing really well. Um, when it comes to uh, having something to go as expected and not throw you a lot of curves, you water these trees and they will absolutely reward you with choices uh, on top of choices, on top of choices, oh plenty. 
the idea of bonsai is you're supposed to be able to see the trees and you can't even see those fantastic trunks because we've got so much foliage happening there and it would almost be cool to um, prune all that stuff back and I could maybe even do some little stylish comb over that would give those guys just a just a really nice look and you wouldn't even hardly see any chops all you would see is but you know what we're not doing that we are growing massive amount of limbs and leaves right now and turning all of that energy into into taper into taper and then we're about to back up a little bit and lose this taper we had started in lieu of this taper because we like the future of this taper for this tree better than we liked of this one if you can see i've already begun to chop back and this leader is starting to take its sweet time about getting up here but it was about halfway back there it was about where my middle finger is now last week so that was the amount of uh, growth we were getting out of a day uh, now we're getting in a week so i would say it has slowed down some um i don't really know that my cutting the the tip off of that was an experiment to see if cutting the tip off might release the oxen in the end of the in the tip of the branch telling the tree that uh the old top is not necessarily the top which would uh give the other branches reason to elongate that that was the whole and that does work i was just wondering to what extent you can keep doing that can you just keep plucking the end of it off like clipping your fingernails to um get your other fingernails to grow longer for instance i guess it's kind of a bad analogy but yeah uh but other than um me being impatient um go figure um the tree is doing everything it's supposed to do you can see some of these branches that i cut up cut back last year and they forked off those are the branches that last year i decided would be part of the tree's design so i cut them off so that they could uh do just what they're doing branch off so uh later in the fall when all of this stuff turns that beautiful rusty uh iron rusty color red i'll go back through and i'll cut these cut these cut these cut these all of the little vibricated branches i will cut them off so that the following year uh all two or all four uh, of those can do that again and um in that way two becomes four four becomes six six becomes eight and we just keep rolling that right on out just like that and a quick look at the progress we are making on our ponderosa and we're doing a little needle exchange here as well uh the ponderosa it is getting treated uh, quite differently than the way we are treating our Japanese black pines. Our ponderosas are still being fed, both of them, and uh, we might be removing dead needles, but we aren't thinning needles to, uh, we're not exchanging or, or moving energy. Uh, we're not thinning the needles to all over to the thinnest part of the tree we are not decandling we're just letting stuff do its thing and it certainly is we've got all this green and all the shoots and we're feeding it we're encouraging it to back bud and uh the more it back buds the more needles it will produce and the more needles it will produce the more we keep feeding it and keep encouraging all of those to do just whatever it is they want to do and yeah they'll probably get longer but then uh, in a season or two, we will see a tree that is much fuller and is no longer able to sustain that needle length because it'll have more needles than it can make that long and they will naturally begin to shorten. And at that point where we can come back and clip back at the right time of year, uh, 
the stuff that uh, helps us to keep our proportions. And that, in a nutshell, is that, and that really is in a nutshell. It's, you know, I could go on for an hour over that. But that, in a nutshell, is uh, how you take care of a ponderosa pine. And I'm just right now, just I'm always in awe of that spiral. You can just see it just spirals its way right on through life, just spinning or twisting as the wind and the snow and everything else weighed, weighed on one side of the tree, forced it down, forced the other side up, and then the sun grew and maybe it would curve around there to try to face the sun again with, with uh, its backside in shade and probably still snow on the limbs. Um, they don't really know why they twist, but they do, they twist. Uh, it's beautiful and I just love this tree this is just really I get a lot of pleasure from this tree yeah so let's see that's pretty much goddess I could go on about my Chinese wisteria it is starting to do its summer starting to do its little bit summer change of colors the Japanese wisterias have already started or well well into their transition oh uh we were going to do a, a saturday night live drop last night and the theme of saturday night live drop last night was going to be our maple forest i for whatever reason do not have the bandwidth to pull that off i got uh, i did a trial uh, prior to show and uh it was not up to it was so pixelated I felt like there's just no point in this. And I had uh, put off a Saturday show um, in lieu of a Saturday night show, only to uh, not be able to do the Saturday night show over, uh, over technical issues. Now, um, that I had seen that coming as a possibility. And at one point, I was thinking about doing a second Saturday show during the day just to cover those bases. But yesterday was a pretty good day of rest. And I was kind of like, yeah, we're just gonna um, we're gonna kick it, and it was a really nice day to kick it. I actually slept in every chance I got. So um, been really busy, and that's what kind of led to all of that. It was really nice to get a break, and I wasn't really looking for a break because I'm about to get about a month long break, whether I want one or not. Um, uh, right after the Fourth of July is when I go in. To, uh, to have a procedure and my recovery is going to be between uh, three and four weeks, I think. They said between two and four and then uh, they said, what do you do for a living? I said, uh, I shag ass on a, a hardware store floor doing sales and there's some lifting. And they went, oh, well, two weeks is if you uh, work from home uh, a month if uh, you're doing all of that. I, I think three weeks is usually about my limit, uh, about all I can stand on my back. And then after that, uh, recovery doesn't hurt as much as just, uh, or going out too early doesn't hurt as much as the recovery at that point. I can't lay around that long. It just makes you sore. Anyway, more than you wanted to know about that. But uh, we are uh, going to probably have a few little holidays or a few little holes in our shooting schedule over some of this. There are probably not too many, um, and our need to produce is still there, very strong. Uh, we will be doing our, uh, our next post will be our uh, Wednesday drop, and uh, man, that's going to be something. Uh, not really sure what I'm going to do on there, but we are winding up our work week. Also, uh, next Friday, I think, is my last day of work. Uh, yeah. Hmm. That's going to be really, this is really happening, folks. So, yeah, and it'll be interesting to see how Mummy Pat is able to do video. That'll be worth the price of admission alone. Uh, I'll probably sound a little muffled like, oh, like I've got a COVID mask on for no apparent reason in my own home. But uh, I'm just kind of settling here on the shot of our cypress trees and our ponderosas. I appreciate you. And uh, Frida Reba Darcy appreciates you. 
and all the guys and the kids at the pool appreciate you. Like and subscribe if you have not already. We have got our uh, our uh, cuttings to grow. We have got we have created space for ourselves for more hardy oaks, if nothing else, and uh, and more room and more room for more trees. So uh, yeah, thank you all for watching.